In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to factor polynomials by factoring out the greatest common factor. And before we do that, we first need to learn how to factor the greatest common factor uh, with just numbers. Now, you have done this before in previous math classes, but you may have forgotten how to do it. So I'm going to review how to find the greatest common factor if you're given a list of numbers. So we want to find the greatest common factor of 4, 12, and 26. And this is how you should approach this problem. Go ahead and write the first number, 4, and just start off by making a factor tree. And remember, a factor tree is just where you think of, you know, what two numbers multiply to give you 4. And right now, I can just think of numbers 2 and 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay, and then you would take these and see, well, what numbers will multiply to give you 2. Now, the only numbers that multiply to give us 2 are 1 and 2. Now, if you ever end up with a 1, then usually we just stop there. And the only time that we you know, use a 1 is if the first number that we start with, um, the only number we have is 1. But right now, we're just going to say, okay, you know, the, the two factors of 4 are just 2 and 2. Now, let's do the 12. Now, think about this one. This one's going to be a little bit different than the 4 because, watch this. We can think of two numbers that multiply to give me 12. Now, you could say 6 and 2, or you can say 3 and 4. It really doesn't matter which one you use. I'm just use 6 and 2 because that's the first one I said. It really doesn't matter which numbers you pick. You just pick two that multiply to give you 12. Now, look at 6. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you 6? Yes. Okay. 2 times 3 equals 6, so I can break this down even further. Okay. And then look at 2. Okay. I can't break down any further without getting a 1. I can't break the 3 down any further without getting a 1. And the same thing with this 2 here. So this is as far down as we go. And then next one, let's do the 26. So 26, let's think of the two numbers multiply giving me 26. And that would be 2 and 13. And really, that's the only pair that we have. 2 times 13 equals 26. And we can't break down the 2 any further because we, without getting the 1. And I can't think of any numbers multiply giving me 13 without getting the 1. So that's as far down as we go. So how do we find the greatest common factor from this? Well, what you need to do is find what number do you see that's in the same of all of these factors broken down at the bottom, okay? So I see that we have a 2 in common down here, I have a 2 in common right here, and I have a 2 in common right here. So you see how they all have a 2 common when we broke down this as far down as it can go. You see 2, 2, 2. Now that's it, okay? We can't find any other pairs that work. Okay, now some of you might be thinking, well Mr. McLeod, can't we do this 2 and this 2 here? Well, we can only do it if there was another 2 with this 26, okay? So we have to have one that matches with all of them. And right now, 2 is the only one that we have with all of these right here. So we would say the GCF, okay, that's kind of the abbreviation we use, has to equal 2, okay? So that's just a review on how to find the greatest common factor. We're going to use this in this lesson in a second, okay? Now, before we really get into what this lesson is all about, I also need to review how to find the greatest common factor of variables. And you're going to actually find that this is going to be pretty easy if you just pay attention. Um, the greatest common factor if you're given variables of x cubed and x7 uh, works like this. So think about this. If I write the factors of x cubed, okay, that's going to be x times x times x. Because that's what x cubed means. It means I'm multiplying three x's together. And then if I write the factors of x to the seventh, that's going to be just x times x. We're going to have 7 that are multiplied together, right? Because that's what it means to be x to 7. It means we have 7 uh, x's that we're multiplying together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, one more, 7. So remember, to find the common factors, we want to find all the common you know, pairs that we have. So I have an x here and an x here. Okay, I can pair those together. I can also do another one. Okay, and I can also lastly do this one here and here. But this is all I can go because I, I don't have any more x's with this one. Okay, so even though x to 7 still have some more, I don't have any others with the x cubed to match. So we're going to multiply all these, and that's going to be the greatest common factor. So that's x cubed, and this is x cubed. So the greatest common factor between both of them are x cubed. So that's the answer. Now, there's a shortcut to this. Is really, you don't have to write all this out. You can just look and say, well, which one has the smallest exponent? And that's going to be the greatest common factor if the variables are the same. So you see that's going to be x cubed. So let's try this one right here. X, uh, sorry, this is a squared and a4. What's the greatest common factor of these two? Well, it has to be this one because this one has the smaller exponent. So that's a really quick way to do it, okay? So that, that doesn't take long at all. Now, look at this example. What if I have a number and a variable? What are we going to do with this one? 
Well, first we got to find what's the greatest common factor between the numbers, the 6 and the 4. So let's just do that real quick. So remember, 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3, right? And 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So what's the greatest common factor you see between these? Well, they have a, a common factor of a 2 and a 2, and that's it. I, the 3 doesn't pair with this, so all we have is a 2. So the greatest common factor with the numbers is just a 2. And then look at the x's. Which one has the smaller exponent? Well, it's going to be this one. So the greatest common factor between x to the 5 and x cubed is just x cubed. So I'm going to just bring it with the, the 2. And this is it. This is the greatest common factor. So you see how we had them do both? We had to do the number part and the variable part together, and we just multiply them at the end. So why don't you try this next one on your own? Just pause the video, see if you can figure out what the greatest common factor between 3x and 9x squared is. So remember, first we start off with the number. Now some of you might be saying, well, Miss McLeod, we can't think of two numbers that multiply giving you 3 without using 1. So if that's the case, you know, you can use the 1. This is the only time that you can use the 1 is if at the very beginning. So 1 times 3. It's going to be 3. And then let's try 9. So 9, we can think of two numbers multiplied by 9. That's going to be 3 times 3. So do you see what the common factor is between these two? We have a 3 and we have a 3 here. So greatest common factor is going to be 3. And which one has the smaller exponent with the x and the x squared? It's going to be x. So 3x, that's the greatest common factor right here. All right. Now, this is really, this right here is really what this lesson is focused on. Okay, all the stuff that we did before, this is just uh, just some previous skills that you have learned that we're refreshing to make sure that you're able to start this lesson. So, we've already looked at how to do something called distributing. Okay, if I have 4x and times 2x plus 3, you can distribute. You can do 4 times 2, and actually that right here should be a 8. So there's a little typo here. Let me fix that. There we go. So that should be 4 times 2 is going to be a. x times x is x squared, right? And if we distribute the 4 to the 3, that's going to give me 12. And then we have this x, so that's going to be 12x. So that's distributing. But factoring that we're looking at right now is rewriting an expression as the product of polynomials. And it's really just undistributing. We're, we're doing the opposite of distributing. We're, we're starting with something here. You're going to see something like this, and we're going to write it as the product. So that's what factoring is, okay? So how we factor, I have some steps down here. And the first step is you got to find the greatest common factor of each term in the polynomial. So that's why I had this reviewing greatest common factor. You would have to find what's the greatest common factor of 8a squared and 12x. And then um, we can use that to find the new, the new uh, polynomial by using the greatest common factor, okay? Now I'm going to show you how we do this in this next example. You're going to see it's not that bad. So if I want to factor the greatest common factor in each of the following polynomials here, and I have 15x squared plus 100, what we need to do first is find the greatest common factor. So here's what we're going to do. Let's find the greatest common factor of 15x squared, and this is how I want you to do it. Okay, first, let's break down 15. What two numbers multiply give you 15? That's going to be 3 and 5. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little trick on how you write this that's going to help you um, see real easily how to write the answer. So once you find these two factors, I want you to write it like this. I want you to do 3 times 5, okay, like that, and then take this x squared, and I want you to write it like 2x's, because that's what x squared means. So do x times x. And you're going to see why you have to write it like this in a second, okay? It's going to really make this problem easier if you do this. Okay, now let's do the 100, okay? So what two numbers multiply to give you 100? Well, we have 10 times 10, and then we can break this down further, right? What two numbers multiply give you 10? Well, that's 5 and 2. And this one's also 5 and 2, right? So now I want you to do the same thing with these. Okay, right? Do 5 times 2 times 5 times 2. Okay, and I'll show you why we're doing this in a second. Okay? So we can find the greatest common factor between these two, you know, sets of numbers right here. We see we have a 5 and a 5. That's the common. You see that? So what you're going to do is this. You're going to take this greatest common factor, and I want you to write it here and put parentheses behind it. In fact, I want you to go ahead and just make an open set of parentheses. we got to figure out what's going to go in here. Because remember, let me remind you what we're trying to do. We're trying to take something like this and write it as a product. So that's going to be some number, some monomial multiplied by something inside parentheses. And that's what we're trying to find now is what goes inside parentheses. The number on the outside is always the GCF. You see that? Okay. 
So what we just found was the GCF. So that's why it's on the outside. But we've got to figure out what goes in. And here's how you figure it out. It's really easy. Just take the leftovers that you have after you circled these common factors. Okay, so don't worry about this 5 anymore. Just focus on this 3xx. So that's 3x squared. So you're going to put that back in parentheses here. Okay, and then you're going to come over here and see, well, what do you have left here? 2 times 5 times 2, that's 20. So you're going to do plus 20 because that's a plus sign. And that's what goes back in parentheses. And that's it. You're done. That's how you factor it. Okay. And by the way, you can check to see if you factored correctly by distributing. If I do 5 times 3, that's going to give me 15, and I have the x squared. So that's 15x squared. And if I do 5 times 20, that's going to give me plus 100. So don't you see? We get right back where we started. So if you distribute and you get the correct answer, that's a clue that you did the right thing. Okay, so this is the correct answer here. Well, let's try another Pratt's problem. What if I want to factor the greatest common factor of this? 8m squared plus 4m. So you remember what we do? We just take this 8m squared first, and let's just go ahead and factor this. So that's going to be, we can say 4 times 2 equals 8, and I can break down this 4 even further. So that's 2 times 2, right? So this is how we're going to write it. We're going to do 2 times 2 times 2, okay, that equals 8, and then do 2, 2 times m times m. And then do the same thing with this 4m. So what two numbers multiply give you 4? That's just going to be 2 times 2. So we can write this as just 2 times 2, and then don't forget the m, okay? So now you need to circle all the common factors. So we have a 2 here and a 2 here, bam. We have a 2 here and another 2 here, bam. We have an M, and we have an M here, and I'm done with this one. I don't have any more left to do. So remember what we do? Well, what's the greatest common factor? That's going to be 2 times 2 times M, so that's going to be 4M. So that's the greatest common factor. So put parentheses. We've got to figure out what goes inside. So the only thing left is now a 2 and an M. So we're going to put 2M here, okay? And then what's left over here? Well, nothing. Everything's gone. So what number do we use if everything gets taken out? Okay, We don't have anything left over. If you ever don't have anything left over, it's always going to be a 1. Don't put 0. Some students think 0 because everything's gone, but it's going to be a 1. And think about it. 4 times 2 equals 8, and then m times m is m squared, and 4m times 1 equals 4m. So that should make sense. So this is how you factor in this one here. All right, pause the video and see if you can try this one on your own, and then start again and see if you got the correct answer. So we want to find the greatest common factor of this, 3x squared, and what we have here, this is just going to be 1 times 3, so we can just say 1 times 3 times x times x, okay? And then we can find the greatest common factor of 6x, so that's just going to be 3 times 2, so that's just going to give me 3 times 2 times x. So let's circle all the common factors we got. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we got a 3, and we have a 3 here, and we have an x here, and we have an x here. So the greatest common factor here is just going to be 3x. So then put the parentheses and figure out what goes inside the parentheses. So we have a 1 times x, that's just going to be x. And then we just have this 2 here, so that's just going to be plus 2. And that's it. We're done. All right, now, if you've got any questions on these problems, be sure you pause the video, check it, see what's going on. If you're still confused or you're not sure what to do, raise your hand and let me know. Okay, we got about one last example to do, and I'm actually going to change this one a little bit, uh, okay, because I want you to see what happens if we have a negative in front, okay? So, we want to find the greatest common factor of each of these following polynomials. And I have a negative 6x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x, so now I have 3. So, what do we do if we have 3, and what happens if we have a negative? So let me show you. First, just write this number 6x cubed and don't worry about the negative, just leave it out. Okay, and I'll show you what we're going to do with the negative in a second, but just find the greatest common factor like you've always done. So that's going to be 3 and 2. So we can write this as 3 times 2, and then we have 3x times x times x times x. All right, and now I'll do the same thing with this 9x squared. Don't worry about the negative right now. I'll show you what we'll do with that in a second. So we have 9 is going to be 3 times 3. So that's going to be 3 times 3, and then we have 2x is x times x. All right, and then next we have this 12x squared. I mean, sorry, not 12x squared, but just 12x. So that's going to be, we can use 4 and 3. 4 times 3 equals 12, and then this one breaks down to 2 times 2. 
So that's as far down as we can break down. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times x. So let's go ahead and find the common factors. So notice that they all have a 3, 3, and a 3 in common. Okay, what about this 2? This one has a 2, but this there's no 2 here. So I can't use a 2. What about the x? x, x, x. Okay, so they all have an x in common too. So I can use that one. So you see what we have? We all we have a 3x, and that's it. I can't do any more pairs. So the greatest common factor is 3x. Okay. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do with this negative sign. Okay. If your leading coefficient, okay, this number that starts off as negative, then what we like to do is we like to also bring the negative with the greatest common factor. Okay. That's usually what we try to do. So I'm actually going to put the negative out front. Okay. So if we do that, here's what's going to happen inside parentheses. Okay. Watch this. This uh, left over here, this 2 and this x, x, this 2x squared, I'm going to make that a positive. And why does it need to be a positive? Because this is the first one here, and this is the first one here. We have to change the sign, okay? We have to change the sign. And hopefully it makes sense, because think about it. If I distribute this back, a negative 3 times a 2 gives me a, po uh, sorry, a negative 6. If this were a negative 2, then that would make that a positive 6. So that wouldn't work. So we have to change the signs. Okay? So just keep that in mind. What about this one? 3 and x. Well, that was a negative, so that needs to be now a positive 3x. You see? And think about it. If I distribute back negative 3 times 3, it's going to give me a negative 9. So it has to match. All right? And then lastly, we have 2 times 2. Now, this was a positive 12 over here, so this is where the 12 came from over here so this needs to change sign to be a negative 4 because 2 times 2 is 4 and why does this need to be negative 4 because think about it. negative 3 times a negative 4 gives you a positive 12 so use the distributed property to check to see if it actually works okay but this is usually what we do we factor out the negative okay so this right here is going to be the correct answer so that was pretty much the last example uh, go ahead and try some practice problems now see if this uh, this um, new lesson helps you understand this, but if you're still confused, please let me know.